Okay, so the next option for what we do with our remainder is increasing the quotient by one. Now, it's important to know that our quotient will only increase by one no matter what the remainder is. Okay, so um, if, your quotient, if your remainder is 3, your quotient does not increase by 3. Your quotient still just increases by 1. We just bump it up 1, and I'm going to do an example of that one next. Yes? So do you, like, do, um, do you go up 1 and then you don't have the remainder with it anymore? It's a whole number? Yep, you go to the next whole number. That's exactly what I mean. Okay, so let's look at number two on page 56, and this is an example. Peggy has 23 markers, and she wants to organize her markers into boxes. Each box will hold seven markers. How many boxes will she need for all 23 markers? The reason I circled all there, or put a box around all, is because she wants every marker in a box. It doesn't say how many full boxes will she have. She wants every marker to go in a box. So let's picture that for a minute. So the first seven go in one box, right? That's seven. The next seven go in a box. That's 14. The next seven go in a box. That's 21. And then I have 22, 23. I have three left, two left. What do I do with those two? What does Peggy want to do with those two? Brady? Um, put them in their own box? She wants them in a box. I don't know if you know Peggy. But she also goes by Mrs. Young, and Mrs. Young is not the kind of person who's just going to have extra markers laying around. She wants them in a box. It's not going to be a full box, but she's going to have to have four boxes. Okay? So she's going to have seven, 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 and the last box will have two. But in order for them to all be in a box, she has to have four boxes. So what's our answer? How many boxes does she need? Four. Okay, so the math on that one looks like this. 23 divided by 7. 7 can go into 23 three times. Subtract that out, which is 21. It's 3 remainder 2. Well, that remainder 2 means we bump up our quotient to make it 4. Okay, the third example of what we can do is the answer can be the remainder. Okay, so we'll write that down and then we'll do an example of that. The remainder can be the answer. So what you might be recognizing is we just kind of stepped up our problem solving game a little bit. Because not only do we have to be able to do the math, but we have to make sure that we're using that math to answer the question. Okay, so look at the third example on page 56. Andrea, a florist, has 67 flowers and she wants to put nine flowers in each bouquet. How many flowers will not be used for a full bouquet? So, if Andrea wants to make bouquets and she has 67 flowers, she's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flowers in this bouquet. 
Then she'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flowers in the second bouquet. Now I'm up to 18 flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine flowers in the third bouquet. I've used 27 flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've used 36 flowers, yes. I just used basic math and I don't have an answer, like 759. Yes, I just want people to see the picture of why the remainder is the answer, okay? So now I'm up to 45 flowers and five bouquets. Six bouquets will take 54 flowers. Seven bouquets will take 63 flowers. And then I have 64, 65, 66, 67 flowers. How many flowers do I have left over? Four. <clears throat> so how many flowers will not be in a bouquet? Four. Four. And just like Brady said, you can do this with division. I want you to be able to visualize in your head why four is the answer, okay? So when I do 67 times nine, I know that nine times seven is 63, and that gives me a remainder of four. So the remainder is my answer, okay? What happens a lot in fourth grade is somebody writes down that the answer is seven remainder four. Well, that doesn't answer the question. That tells me the math. It tells me that you know how to divide two digits by one digit, but it doesn't tell me the answer. Okay, and then the next one is we change the remainder to a fraction. Okay, if we flip over page 56, okay, then we have um, this example. Becca has 18 inches of ribbon to make hair bows for the craft fair. She is going to make four hair bows. How long will each ribbon be? So if I want, if I need the same amount of ribbon for each hair bow, then I need to do 18 divided by four. Okay, so we can take our 18 and we can put it into our four groups. Here's a hair, here's four inches. And I view 16 and then I have two more inches. How can I divide up those two inches to make it part of the ribbon so that I don't have any ribbon left over? Harper? I have four bows with each that are four inches long and then I have two more. Well, each bow is four inches long. And then I have two inches of ribbon left. How can I divide those two inches of ribbon so that each bow is the same length? Lucy? Um, you can do half, so half will go into the first and half will go into the second. That's exactly right. I can cut each part of that ribbon in half so that I have four and a half, four and a half, four and a half, and four and a half. Now that's almost easier to do mathematically. If we look at 18 divided by four, we know that 18 can go, four can go into 18 four times, which makes 16, and that leaves me two left over. When you change that remainder to a fraction, and we only do that in these kinds of story problems, you take your remainder and you put it over your divisor. And that's really exactly what Lucy just said. She just split these last two pieces of ribbon in half so that we could add a half to each one. So it's four and two fourths. 
okay? Which is the same as four and one half. Yes. Yes, and each. Yes, you would. Okay, are there questions about these? How to use your remainder? Yes, Nolan. Uh, did you say there was five? I did say there was five. And the last one says, use the remainder to count up to the divisor. And I don't have an example of that story problem, but let's go ahead and write it down. And I have a worksheet, and I think we'll find an example there. Use the remainder and I can kind of tell you an example. Here, when you're done writing, I'll share an example with you. I just don't have a written example. Yes. Can you wait just one second, please? Okay, so if on number one over here, if the question had said, how many more flowers will Susie need to have all the flowers in an equal number of vases, what would the answer be? How many more flowers does she need to have the same amount of flowers in each vase and have nothing left over? How many more flowers does she need? Show me with your fingers two so we're using our remainder which is one to count up to the divisor two three to let us know that she would need two more flowers to fill the vases okay so i don't have a good example of that on here but that's a oral example